brother. Well, Jesus said, I only came to fulfill. I didn't came to change not nothing. You know what I'm saying? I came to fulfill the law. So what he's saying is those commandments that Moses gave you still stand. They still Regardless stand. Whether you want them or not. But if you're not eating pork, or you're a Christian, you're not. Or you're going out and not even have a dog. It speaks to all that. In the back of 11, Deuteronomy 14. Right. Let's speak all about that. Exactly. You are 100% correct. Now, now, remember when, um, I don't think I said it yet, but now I always do this. Whatever we teach, we always put it to the test because it's not about talking anymore because the Christian church, they probably still talking right now. They still talking right now, so it's time. We are the church. This is the church, exactly. But now it's time for the true worshipers. It's time for the true worshipers. They don't know what they're worshiping. You understand that? They don't know what they're doing. They're actually worshiping Satan. They don't understand that. But now it's time for the true worshipers. Give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. What? The reason why we're going to go to this scripture is to see, hey, are you one of those true worshipers? Because you have an understanding. There's no doubt about it. Are people who are spiritual? But when it comes time to keep God's commandments, that's when we, ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I can do that. But we're going to see. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So now we have a what hierarchy, right? We have order. It says God, Christ, man, woman. Yeah, children. God, Christ, man, woman, right? Read it again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now, this is very important. I want y'all both to pay close attention to what the Bible is going to say real quick. All right? We done? Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Now, it says, when it says, the first head, it says, having his head covered. It's talking about your physical head. It's talking about your physical head. Read on. Dishonoreth. His head, this honor of his head. So then it's talking about your spiritual head. Right. Now, according to the order, who is the man's spiritual head? Christ. Right. Christ. It's Christ. All right? Read it again. But the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So, as you'll see, none of us have our head covered. When we come out here because, you mean that Revelation 19, to show you that when it comes to prayer, are we praying right now? No. But we are prophesying. We are prophesying. When you're in the midst of this, you are what? Prophesy because we're talking about the testimony of Jesus Christ. All right, read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. The what? The testimony of Jesus. Come on. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of what? The spirit of prophecy. So guess what? When this Bible coming out, when we are teaching this Bible, you got to do what? What do you have to do? You tell me. Okay. Uh, what you going to do, boss? See? That's no, easy. I told you. Right? No, I I no, no, that's easy. Right. See, see, see. No. See how dangerous that is? Because I told you, when it comes to God's law, see, we talk good. We talk. Oh, I know this. I know that. See, now, now you want to speak against the Bible. How about, no, how about you do this? Give me Jeremiah 7 22. Watch this. This is what God wants. He don't want our excuses. He doesn't want to hear our opinions. All he wants is for you to do what you're supposed to do. That's all God wants you to do, bro. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 22. For I spake not unto your fathers. Nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So even during the time of Egypt, even when we came out after the Exodus, we did animal sacrifice. But God is saying he spoke. He didn't speak to our fathers about animal sacrifice. He never wanted that. He didn't want anything. All he wanted was this. Read verse 23. Obey my voice. Do what? Obey my voice, and I will be your God. That's what.
we're going to turn our captivity. When we start listening to what God has to say. Otherwise, we will continue to be on the bottom. We will continue to be gunned down in the streets. We will continue to get no justice. Because we don't want to listen to God. That is what's holding us back. As much as you may think you're trying to help or be a part of the solution, you are holding your people back, bro. You have to understand that. God just saying, bro, when the Bible come out, just take it, just remove it, bro. That's all he's saying. Anything outside of that, that's nonsense. I don't want to hear that. You have to understand that thing. Otherwise, it's going to continue to go, continue to go. And then when we finally get out of here, you're going to be looking at the chariots, take away the righteous, and you're going to get burnt up. That's, right. That's what's going to happen, bro. I'm trying to let you know. But guess what? Squash all that. Just do what he said. He said, do it. Just do it. First Corinthians 11 and 4. That's simple. You ain't got to go through all that, bro. Just like this. I heard it. I said, dang, I got to take my head off. You know what I'm saying? Because God, it ain't, I didn't tell you that. You understand? I didn't tell you that. God told you that. These are the words of God. Not the words of Mattathias. He also said the righteousness should be called by my name. Their name after me, the okay. righteous. That's how you know you're a child of God when you name after him. When you okay. carry, listen, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. You, carry you said name, the ch a child of God, right? When you carry his name. You are his child. Okay. You give me, give me Matthew seven and twenty one. And then give me uh, Psalms uh, one thirty eight. But you're not called oh, by right. his name. You call by their name. Satan. You, you said I'm not called. Oh, he's one of those. Oh, he's one of those name guys. Okay, gotcha. This is oh. I was wondering why he's so rebellious. That's why. Who what you got? The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Now, brother, you can learn from this nonsense that he's about to spew out of his mouth. I want you to watch what God is saying. Who what you got? Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It says, not everyone who says unto him, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Come on. But he that doeth the will of my Father which... Wait, wait. He that doeth what? The will of my Father which is in heaven. So it says, the person who does the will of God which is in heaven, that's how you're going to get to the kingdom. Now my question is, what's God's will? What's his will? Do we know? Law. Oh, goodness. That's right. The law of God. And he just told us, he just told us what to do. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That what? Thy law is within my heart. God's laws are within his heart. You have to understand, when he tells us to do something, it's not for us to try to rationalize it. Just do it. It's not for us to debate and say, okay, I'm a child of God. Let me ask you a question. Who are the children of God? Who are they? The children of Israel, right? Give me uh, Numbers 1538. Give me Numbers 1538. Watch this. Because he said to Jews, you're right. He said, he he said also, the children of Israel. But Jesus also said in Revelation that, they call themselves Jews, but they are not. They are saints of the synagogue. Who, who's that talking he's, about? He's, not, he's talking about those so-called Jews. We, brother, we know that. We know that. So I'm asking you, who are the children of God? The children of Israel. The real children of Israel. Right. Okay. Right. people. Right. 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 This Judah. Right. Right. Judah, Ephraim, Manasseh, Zebulun. Yeah, all that. Watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Nope. Speak unto the children of Israel. Unto who? The children of Israel. Unto who? The children of Israel. So, this is speaking unto the children of God, right? All right, come on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That they do what? Make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So, my question to you is, you said you were a child of God. How, how would I even know that? Because God told the children of God to wear fringes on their garments. How would I even know you were a child of God? How would I know that? Well, at the same time, you know about the fruits that I bear. By the, he said about the right, fruits that you bear. Right, you're, you, right, you're you fruits. Know, it's not no garments. It's no, about your work. Right, it, it is. Your work is even heavy. He, he right. also said that. Right. And God just told for, you to remove your hat and you didn't. It is harder for a camel. Hmm? It's easy for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for a rich man to walk in the so kingdom of heaven. So that means that garments and clothing and money has nothing so, to do with So you're saying right, that's right. not a law? I let you speak for a second. Is that not a law? Let me speak for a second. But brother, you're not bringing no scriptures. But there's many laws. Bring out a scripture that says you don't have to keep the laws. What you mean you don't have to keep the laws? 
God said, I came and I will change. He said, I will come and I will teach the book, the talk, the gospel. What scripture is that? Yep. What scripture is that in Matthew? Yep. Even Matthew 7. No, no, no. I'm, I don't want to hear wait, wait, the words. Even, I want to hear the scripture. I'm telling you, even Matthew 7. Right, you're not listening, right. brother. Somebody grab Matthew the Bible. Matthew 17. Jesus Hold on. Came you, we want to hear the Bible. He revealed the law. He, what does that mean? He is our righteousness. He is a righteous. So we try told. to keep the law to the best we can, and when we fall short, Jesus covered. All right, so do he you have is to, our righteousness. He's the it. end of the law for right. righteousness. Right, hold on one second. Okay. Do you have to keep covered? Because I see now I see what's going on. Because you see, find another dude that's not keeping God's laws. No, I ain't say you ain't supposed to keep. So the question is: so when we go to the law, why is there any argument? Why is there any type of argument but, but, when we but, go to the law? But who can who can keep it perfect? Who can, can keep it perfectly? We can. Perfectly? Yes. Did perfectly. you not know Every that? commandment. Give me Matthew 5 and 48. Brother, you, know, right, you remember no. earlier when I said you need to be taught? Perfectly, though. So, brother, do you remember earlier when I said you need to be taught? There is yes none or no. righteous. No, not one. What does that mean? Okay, let's go to that. And who is the one that said Brother, hold on, hold on. I'm going to deal with it. I got you. Calm down. We're doing one at a time. So, let's go to the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 9. He says, there's none righteous, no, not one. I know what he's talking about. I'm going to give you a chance to break it down, then I'm going to give you the understanding. Now, Romans 3 and 9, pay attention, brother. Matter of fact, Jediah, I need you up here. Jediah, I need you up here. Romans 3 and 9. I want us to come to an agreement, and agreement is going to be in the Bible. Not about what I think. Not about what I think. Not about what you think. It's going to be what the Bible said. That's why I said, after a while, I'm just going to pull the scripture and we're going to go to it. It's because you said, what does this mean? Then we're going to get the scripture that you quoted. All right, read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 9. Yep. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. What does that mean? That means when Adam fell, all men fell. So the only way we can be redeemed is by Jesus' righteousness. All our righteousness are in filthy hands. Should we live according to the law the best we can? Yes, yes we should. But Jesus is our righteousness. He's the only reason we have uh, to be reconciled back to God. Our righteousness is nothing. It's our requirement. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. All right. Let's go back to it. Watch this. Romans chapter 3 verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? So when it says, are we better than they? What's that talking about? I didn't, I, I didn't hear the scripture before. Read it again. You want, this, you want verse 8? Yeah. All right, read verse 8. Romans 3 verse 8. And not rather as we be slanderously reported and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come whose damnation is just what then are we better than they no and no wise stop what does it mean are we better than they what's i talking about You have to go back a little bit further, man. Uh, you want me to read verse 1 all the way down to verse 9? Yeah, I have to, I have to see right. what it's talking about. All right, go ahead. Because the reason why I'm doing this, a lot of us, like I told you. But go I agree with you. I'm not saying go I go don't go agree. Go, go back to verse 1. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness committed the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God had more abounded through my life unto his glory, 
Why yet am I also judged as a sinner and not rather as we be slanderously reported as some affirm that we say let us do evil that good may come whose damnation is just verse 9 what then are we better than they no and no wise for we had before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin all right what does it mean mean that they weren't righteous and who's the they the, the original the, the israelites they weren't righteous and we not either that's what that's saying okay read verse nine again romans chapter three verse nine what then are we better than they okay who's we who's the we we are the uh the people that uh god has called them to repent okay who's they they are the original ones that were called Wait, wouldn't that be the same people? Talk about Satan. Wait a minute, hold on. Read it again. Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? Are we better than they? It, okay, so if we are Israel, they is what? The Gentiles? Who are the Gentiles? Everybody else. Everybody else. So now you're saying that other nations have a chance of repentance? So a white man can eat, he has a chance of repentance too? I know where you're going at, but Jesus, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he no. gave his only begotten son. That's what I did. That's what I did. Because I know you got doctors on you. Now, I went there for a reason. I'm going to give you that right and understand. I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to deal with that. Read Romans 3 9. Read what you got. Romans chapter 3 verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? The we is talking about the circumcision, the southern kingdom of Israel, which consists of Benjamin, Judah, and Levi, which is the ones who did what? Who gave the law. And they were guilty. They were guilty of robbing the people. They're dealing with the people wrong because they were saying keep the law, but they themselves, they wouldn't do it. Then it says, are we better than they? That they is talking about the northern kingdom of Israel. Right. Ephraim, which turned to idolatry, right. who were cut off as a people. Right. So the question says, are we better than they? Me? Uh -huh. No, in no wise. No, in no wise, because all Israel has sinned and fell short of the glory. Right. That's why Jesus Christ came and died for the world of Israel. Come right. on. Right. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles, both southern kingdom and northern kingdom, me, that they are all under sin. All under sin. So, jump down to verse 20 real quick. Watch this. Now we're going to go in regards to the law. Can we be perfect in keeping the law? Let's find out. Read what you got. Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, by the deeds of the law, meaning what? By the law of sacrifice, by actually sacrificing, come on, there shall no flesh be justified because we just realized what? All of Israel fell short. They were all under sin, so the law of sacrifice could not make us perfect. That's right. Be in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin, meaning what? Every year we'd have to offer up those sacrifices, which could not make us perfect because every time we offered up those rams, those bullocks, it was a remembrance of sin. Right. Give me that in Hebrews 10. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, the law of sacrifice having a shadow of good things to come, those good things were referring to Jesus the Christ. That's see? right. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices, with those what? Those sacrifices. Can never with what? Those sacrifices, come on, which they offered year by year, Read. continually make the comers there unto perfect. They can never make the comers what? They're unto perfect. Hey, if we continue to keep the law of sacrifice, we can never be perfect. Well, but you right. have to understand something. Through Jesus Christ, yes, yeah. we can be perfect. That's Go right. back to Romans chapter 3, verse 21. This is what I was trying to tell you, bro. I understand you got a zeal. But, bro, sometimes you just got to humble down right. and realize what the Bible's telling you. According to the law of sacrifice, no, we cannot be perfect. But under Jesus Christ, yes, we can. Read. <laughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. We just read that in Hebrews 10. The law of sacrifice, we can never become perfect. Come on. 
For by the law is the knowledge of sin. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Come on. But now the righteousness of God. Wait, 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 wait a minute. It just says now the righteousness of God. That righteousness is talking about Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. Right. Read that again. But now the righteousness of God without the law. With what? Without the law. Meaning what? The righteousness of God, Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. It says the righteousness of God without the law of sacrifice. So we must find out what that righteousness is. Read Jesus, what you got. Jesus is not our righteousness? He is, but we have to understand what is that righteousness. When he came on the scene, what? He was the word that was made flesh, right? We got to figure out what that word is. We're going to find out. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. Our what? Our righteousness. So you have to understand. The Bible gives us the definitions. We go precept upon precept to get the understanding. Read it again. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. All these what? All these commandments. How many? All these commandments. Nitpick. All these commandments. We can never be perfect. All these commandments. Go back to Romans 3. Go back to Romans 3. Let's find out what, if the Bible is telling us we can never be perfect or not. Read what you got. But now, the unright, excuse me, Romans chapter 3 verse 21. But now, the righteousness of God without the law. So meaning what? The righteousness of God without the law of sacrifice, read, is manifested. Is manifested. How was he manifested? When... John the Baptist saw him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the whole world. Meaning what? We have a chance at redemption. We have a chance at reconciliation. Right. Ultimately, we have a chance at the kingdom of God. That's right. Read. Without the law is manifested. Come on. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets. Meaning what? Moses. Meaning what? Uh, Ezekiel, meaning Isaiah, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, Matthew 5, 48. Let's see what the Most High God commanded us to do. Let's see if he said be mediocre or if he said be perfect. Because he sent his son, Jesus the Christ, for that reason. Be what you got. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did it say be so poor? Read it again. Be ye therefore perfect. The Bible is 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 beautiful. That's all I got to say. The Bible but, but, speaks but, but, for itself. Perfect. You just have to have the understanding. Give me Psalms perfect 111 don't and 10. Mean. Oh, what does it mean? Perfect does not mean flawless. Perfect means complete. So it let's find out what flawless. It does not mean you will never Proverbs sin again. Chapter 30 verse 6. Then give me so first kings. Tell me who I hear. We're going to go to the Bible. Bible. Can never sin again. We're going to go to the Bible. Never. We're going to go to the Bible. Never. Brother, humble yourself. We're going to go to the Bible. Okay. That's not my words. Do I, do I speak my own words, brother? Do I go to the Bible? Be real. I'm not speaking my own words. I'm dealing with the Bible. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 6. The reason why I'm telling you to calm down is because you're going to be held accountable for everything you say. So I'm telling you to calm down because you're not... You, 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 you thought, I know you got a zeal, but it ain't. It's not lining up. Read what you got. Add down not... Read it, uh, call it and read it. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 6. Add down not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. That's, that's what I'm trying to prevent you from. So realize that if you're going to say something, like it says in 1 Peter 4 and 11, if any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. Right. Make sure you have some understanding. Now, go to 1 Kings 8 and 61 to find out what God says perfection is. All right? Not me, not you, but what God says. Read what you got. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. Be what? Be perfect with the Lord our God. Let's find out what that perfection is. Come on. To walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments. And to do what? Keep his commandments. And to keep his commandments. Now, check this out, bro. I'm going to ask you a question. Babies, you have children so you can relate. When you're teaching a baby to walk, do they fall a few times? Yes, sir. But eventually, what happens? Chapter 3, verse 24. 
Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. Now it says the law, meaning what? The law of sacrifice was our schoolmaster. Think about it. If you have a school, right? This, I know there's like an elementary school down here, right? Who would be uh, considered the master of that school? The principal. The principal, right? Read it again. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. It says that the law was our schoolmaster. All right? Meaning what? The law of sacrifice prepared us, taught us right from wrong. Right? You with me? Read right. on. To bring us unto Christ. To do what? Bring us unto Christ. To bring us unto Christ. Meaning what? To get us ready for the righteousness of the law without the law of sacrifice. That's right. First John 2 and 1. It was to get us prepared for this. Meaning, hey, when we used to sin, we used to offer up turtle doves, right? We used to offer up rams, bullets, if we sinned. That was to get us ready for righteousness under Christ. We just do it different now. I got a question. Okay. I still answer you first one. Okay. All right, watch this. Watch this. First John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. It says if any of us happen to sin under Christ, we have an advocate. Meaning what? Someone who could speak on our behalf. But why would we sin if we made perfect? If we perfect, we won't sin. But right? this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. Do you not remember... When I just asked you about the child, right? Give me that to become like children. Go right back to yeah, first yeah, child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you went. I want you to stay with me. I want you to stay with me. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I want, John 3? Yeah. That's what I want, right? Become like children. Yeah. John 3. All right. I just want you to follow. Just follow with me. How are we doing this? Give me what you got. The book of John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Except what? A man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Meaning what, brother? Coming into repentance, you got to be born again. Meaning what? Hey, as a spiritual babe, you are going to fall. It's going to happen. But you have to do what? Pick yourself back up. Learn. Okay, that's hot. Dang, that's, that can stab me. And then you get back up, like we were talking about earlier, the spiritual warfare. And what's going to get you through those battles? The laws of God. Yes. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Back to 1 John 2 and 1. Watch this. 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perpetuation of our sins. So no longer is a ram, a totem dove, or a bullock the perpetuation for our sins. It's now who? Jesus the Christ. Which is what? John 1 and 29. You'll see it. It makes perfect sense. You always hear the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. What does that mean? The sacrifice. Right. The atonement. The perpetuation. I mean, what you got? The book of John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. The what? The Lamb of God. Come on. Which taketh away the sin of the world. Which taketh away the sin of the world. Meaning what? The world of Israel. Isaiah 45, 17. Now, the hope, don't get that. I want you to get John 14 and 6. John chapter 14 and 6. Remember, in 1 John 2 and 1, he said, He is the advocate. An advocate does what? Speaks on your behalf. Now this is how you do it. John 14 and 6. Read what you got. The book of John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man can come to the Father directly. You must go through the advocate and his name is Jesus Christ. Right. He is the Lamb of God. He, said, he is the atonement. He said there's no intercessor. What did you say? Jesus said there's no intercessor to God. He is. Jesus said there's no... Oh, put a scripture. He said, I don't know, I don't know, I'll tell you, he said there's no intercessor to God. You could come it, read free. Read it again. Read it again. Free. He's not listening to the Bible. I understand. John chapter... No, you don't, because you didn't hear what, what Christ just said out of his own mouth. Read what you got. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, what? No man, what? No man, read, cometh unto the Father 
but by me. So now you so need to Matthew pull a scripture. So in Matthew 17, no, wait, 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 bro. Matthew 17, it scripture. talks about, Jesus talking about there'll be a one to come and look for him. Pull your scripture. I'm showing you, Matthew. Read it. Matthew 17 and 11. All right, go ahead and go to it. He's talking, I go 10. And to all the signs and attributes. Why then the scribe said, Elijah must come? Jesus said, an answer to them. Indeed, Elijah must come first to expel all things right. in my name's sake. Right. He said, I will not come back. Right. Do not look for me. Okay. So, what I'm saying is, God said, I will come out my hiding place. I will come myself, raise one amongst you, like I did most. He would teach you the book, the Torah, and the gospel. Okay. Now, if you're not teaching the book, the Torah, and the gospel, what is the book? Hold on, wait a minute. What is the book? I'm asking you what you just brought out. Who, I'm who showing are, you. So you're saying Elijah hasn't come yet? Elijah has come and gone, and you have known him not. That's what the scripture says. So, okay, I know who Elijah was. Do you know? Yes, I know who Elijah was. Who was it? A lot of the, that messenger that will come no, in I'm the asking, end time. Who, who, who was he in the New Testament? Who is that? Listen, you talking about two ready. different lives. You talking about lives and life shut. I'm not talking about no, that lives. I'm not. I'm talking about no, the lives. I just said no, I'm not. The one that come in the end time. Yeah, he already came and gone. Yeah. Yes, he come and gone. Right. So I'm gone. asking you, who was it? That greater life. Who was it? A prophet. You got it the prophet. I can pour the name yeah. out. I can give you So my, my question was, do you, do you know who it was? Yeah. Who is it? Elijah. <laughs> so brother, I'm going to go to the scripture. I'm giving you a chance to look good. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm trying scripture. to help you. I just showed you go to the, I just showed so, you scripture. So I'm going to show you who John the Baptist. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to show you me. who Elijah was. Yeah, show me who Elijah was. Alright, so we're just going to read down for you. Alright, watch this. Matthew chapter 17 verse 11 and Jesus answered and said unto them Elias truly shall first come and restore all things but I say unto you that Elias is come already Christ said he's already come come on and they knew him wait, 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 wait. Jesus said hold I was on so season. you just said not no. yet Jesus said I was a man out of new season right. wait wait wait, wait, wait. you trying to come but me. I say on we are, we're reading the Bible brother you say we'll come in the we'll start at verse 11 again Jesus we're reading in the Bible the bro let's read the Bible let's read the Bible this is the Bible bro Matthew chapter 17 verse 11 and Jesus answered and said unto them Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, Likewise, but have done man. unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Now, now we're going to man. find out who man. Elijah was. Read. Verse 13. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Of right. who? John no. the Baptist. The That's Bible right. says that what? No. Elijah has already came and gone. Then the disciples realized he is talking about John the Baptist. That's, That's right. what the Bible just okay. said. Now, Matthew my Bible. brother, John chapter 3 and verse 30. This is what John the Baptist said. What's Christ coming to see? Let's see. Is, was Elijah better than Christ? Let's see. Let's see what the Bible says. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. John the Baptist, which was, Elijah said, that Christ must increase, but he must decrease. That's right. Meaning, when it comes to speaking to the Most High God, there's no other man that can come freely except they go through who? Jesus the Christ. That's right. Because the what? Christ supersedes Elijah. Right. Give me that in Matthew 17 and 1. Christ supersedes Moses. Right. You have to understand that. Whatever Christ says, that's what stands. That's right. Give me that in Matthew 17. Oh, Read what you got. Matthew chapter 17 God. verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Read on. I want to show you something. Verse 3. And behold, 
they appeared unto them Moses and Elias. They said, who? Moses and Elias. Come on. Talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. So he's asking, is it okay for us to be here? This is strange. I'm seeing the forefather Moses. I'm seeing Elias. He came back. Read. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. How many? Three tabernacles. So he's setting the stage. Three tabernacles. One for Moses, one for Eliza, Elias, and one for who? Jesus the Christ. Come on. One for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Come on. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Come on. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son. Wait, 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 wait. So this cloud said what? This is my beloved son. So when he had three tabernacles right there, the clouds came, opened up, and began to speak. Who is this? The Most High God. Read verse 5 again. Verse 5, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him, do what? Hear ye him, hear Elias, hear ye him, hear Moses, hear ye him. It doesn't matter what he's bringing out. God himself said, listen to his son. And that's what the Bible just said. Give me John chapter 14 verse 6 again. John chapter 14 and verse 6 again. It's that simple. God said, whatever Christ says, listen to him. Read what you got. John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, Moses, no man, Elias, no man, come on, cometh unto the Father, but by me. It says no man can come unto the Father, but by him. So my question to you, bro, can you be perfect one day? According to the Bible, not your own thoughts. Remember when we went, said put away your mortal thoughts? Of course. When you're thinking about it rationally, you be like, I can never be perfect. But that's not what God's saying. God taught you today, said, the way you become perfect is do what? By doing what? The law. This is through the law. And over time, you do what? You get better. That's right. Over time, you get better. You get stronger. And then you can do what? You can resist the devil. That's right. Give me that in uh, James 4. War 4 and, um, what is that, 7? James 4 and 7. You get better and better and better. But step one is what? Just put some fringes on. Step two is what? Go with your beard. Step three is what? Come to the Sabbath. You understand? With like-minded individuals, so your spirit can get built up. So you can get increased. I right, read what you got. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 7. Submit ourselves, therefore, unto God. You see, the Bible doesn't say be combative with God. The Bible doesn't say disobey God's commandments. It says, submit yourselves. Read it again. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Meaning what? Bro, you got to learn how to resist the devil. That's you right. got to learn how to not put yourselves in those situations. Not making it out of Romans 13 and 14. You know? This is what you have to learn. You don't know it yet, but as you repent, as you come back to the Father, as you surround yourself with like-minded brothers who actually love you, this is how you, you learn true repentance. Right. Read what you got. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Put ye, put, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible commands us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And make not provisions for the flesh. And do what? Make not provisions for the flesh. Meaning what? If you're lusting after women, at certain hours, don't be on the laptop. Don't be on your phone. Right. Don't put yourself in situations where you can, make, can, can commit that lust. Right. That's what the Bible's saying. If you want to learn how to be perfect, stop making ways for yourself to commit those acts. Yes. I, got a, I got a question. Yes, sir. Can we really? I know you're saying we can be perfect. But our flesh can never be perfect. Not our flesh. Our spiritual man can be perfect. Give me James 1. But our flesh can never be. Paul said, the things I want to do, I can't do those things. The things I don't want to do, those are things that bear do. What a wretched man that I am. 
Only the Father can make you perfect. Only God can make you perfect. This flesh, the Bible said no good thing well, dwells in this flesh. Real, real That's correct. No That's good thing. Yeah. So, now check this out. We're going to go through some scriptures because you asked a question, so we're going to deal with it. All right? Now, give me that in James. The man in James, find the one in God uh, Peters, calling the legend. Uh, one in ten. One in ten? Okay. That's good. Thank you. Read what you got. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 4. But let... Actually, start at 1. James, chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Now, I want you to pay close attention to what the Bible is about to say, all right? Read on. My brethren... Count it all joy when ye fall into into diverse te diverse temptation. It says, count it all joy when you fall into those diverse temptation. Remember, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare that soul for temptation. Remember that. All right, come on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That the what? The trying of your faith. Meaning what? Is this brother going to sin this time? The trying of your faith to see whether you're going to sin or no. Work with patience, meaning what? You're antsy right now. Oh, you can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. But as you go through experiences, as you go through tribulation, you're doing what? You know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'm becoming more patient. Just like with sports, the more drills you do, the, the slower the game comes to you. Whatever you do, if you continue at it, the better you get. Read. Verse 4. But let patience have her perfect work. Have her what? Her perfect work. It's coming again. That word keeps popping up. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So it's saying, brother, as you continue to keep God's laws, you'll be more patient. The lust, the lust that troubled you in the past, it's not going to be so prevalent after a while because you'll be doing what God requires of you. Right. All right, come on. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That you may be what? That ye may be perfect. The Bible says that you can come to a point where you're perfect, brother. That's right. Read. And entire, wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. So, there, yes, if you continue to try and try and try and try, there's going to come a time where you are going to be walking around here committing no sin. Right. That's what the Bible says. Now, give me the other scripture. Now, that other thought process is very dangerous. All right? Read what you got. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. It says, do what? Make your calling and election sure. So that thought process, thinking I can't be perfect, guess what? You ain't never going to get there. Right. You're not making your calling and election sure. Meaning what? You're playing with God. And meaning what? It's a dangerous thing. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. Give me right. Matthew 26 and 6. We're going to shut down. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org